Welcome back guys, today we're going to talk about maybe one of the most important topics in crypto right now, namely crypto forensics, tracking funds on the blockchain and analyzing what is happening on the blockchain, analyzing where are the money flows flowing and why they're flowing where they are flowing. This is really the next billion dollar market in my view, because Tax authorities, of course, need to know where the money is flowing on the blockchain. Law enforcement, of course, needs to know where the funds are flowing when it comes to cryptocurrencies. But also exchanges need to know what kind of money are flowing in and out of their systems, because in many cases they might be responsible for, for the funds that they handle. So all in all, we have this new paradigm of finance. Just like the internet, open source information, and now anyone can get access to any informa information in the world that you can think of, cryptocurrencies and blockchain are doing the same with finance. We're opening up these closed systems and we're making it all available. You can just check the block explorer and you can see all transactions. But although it's all available, it is still a billion dollar market to try to understand what is happening, to try to under understand who is transferring which funds. If a, if a hack happens, well, nowadays you could try to track where the funds are moving and it's all in the open. But obviously it's not easy because blockchain is not anonymous, but it's also not completely open either. It's pseudonymous. All transactions are there, but we don't know who is making them. We don't know who actually owns these addresses and who has the private keys. So there is a multi-billion dollar market that is opening up, up right now and it's all about trying to understand what is actually happening on the blockchain and maybe even try to tie identity to the different transactions. In some cases, it is just assigning a risk level to some transactions. So for example, if I'm a cryptocurrency exchange and I get a lot of deposits, well, I need a system that can basically give me some kind of risk score for different transactions. And if the risk is big, well, maybe then I can put that transaction transaction on hold, I can try to investigate, maybe these funds are coming from an, a hack and so on and so forth. So the market is very big, but the solutions are still very bad and they're still very young. We haven't really seen any successful ones. I mean, the most famous one is Chainalysis, but they're still very early on. And so today we will be interviewing Parsic. Now, Parsic, they're not competing with Chainalysis. Instead, they're building a tool that companies such as Chainalysis probably will use in the near future. And that is why I'm saying that Parsec is building a solution that could be very important, not only to Chainalysis, but to law enforcement and so many other companies as well, even to auditors, because blockchain is also about auditing and you could audit a big company in a matter of minutes because everything is now open and everything is auditable on a day-to-day -day basis, on a minute-to-minute -minute and even second-to-second -second basis. So we're talking about many, many different use cases. Uh, and so what they are building is a notification system. And when I say a notification system, I'm not talking about price notifications because this is the first thing that people think about when you say notification system, that you get some kind of price alert. No, no, no. It's notifications when something happens happens on the blockchain. So for example, when we see some funds moving, we see some addresses taking action, we see some smart contract doing something, well, we can now get notified automatically. And they actually have a whole programming language that you can use in order to express what you want to monitor. The most primitive script can basically just monitor an address, but you can also make it a lot more complicated and you can write your entire program expressing to Parsec exactly what you want to to monitor. So a more complicated example could be that, okay, when something happens on Bitcoin, check this address on EOS and then also check the smart contract and match it with our internal database of users and our known addresses. And if all of this matches, then I want a notification. So you can really, really get deep and express exactly what you want to monitor. And it's all about making it as usable as possible in all kinds of different use cases. And in, in some way, it is like Zapier. So I don't know if you heard about Zapier, but it's not about crypto. This has nothing to do with crypto, but it's about uh, scripting different events that happen on the internet. So for example, 
when you get a new email in Gmail, and then uh, you can tell Zapier that when this happens, take action and copy some attachment from Gmail to Dropbox. And then when that is done, send me an alert in Slack. So Zapier is the biggest company when it comes to writing these automation scripts, that when something happens on the internet, do something and also mo notify me. So Parsec is the same, but for crypto. Also, there is another competitor to Zapier, which is if this, then that. So if this and that could do something like, okay, when the pizza guy arrives, turn on the light bulb. Uh, but this is very primitive. I mean, I don't want to make it sound too primitive because with Parsec, you have a whole programming language where you can express exactly what you want to monitor across different blockchains. So that being said, guys, I bring to you Parsec. You should know that they are sponsoring the channel. And the reason why we accepted them is because I do think that they're building exciting things. And I do think that their platform, their solution has a big market. So hopefully they can also get a lot of customers. Now, let's get into the interview. Okay, Anatoly, welcome to the show. Welcome to the channel. Amazing to have you here. Let's talk about your project. Let's talk about blockchain analysis, blockchain forensics. What is Parsec to begin with? So firstly, Parsec itself uh, begins with the idea of analyzing what is happening in the blockchain. And uh, as we uh, have already uh, some products done in the uh, blockchain area, uh, we really uh, understood how to monitor them and how to pick most uh, detailed uh, things from the blockchain. And we decided to create a product that will allow uh, another programmers to uh, consume uh, such uh, high quality, low level events from the uh, right. So, so what kind of uh, use cases? What kind of what kind of problems does it solve? Uh, give us some examples. Uh, so, one of the examples, for example, in the Ethereum. So, if you will try to track what is happening in the Ethereum, uh, for example, for uh, ERC twenty tokens, uh, it's a pretty uh, clear uh, and uh, it's enough to analyze their uh, their trans uh, transfer events. Uh, to understand how they are moving. But for example, if you will try to track the Ethereum itself, how it's distributed, uh, it, is a, it is a good challenge uh, to understand uh, all the Ethereum flows because uh, if uh, uh, when Ethereum uh, when Ethereum is transferred from one account to another account, it doesn't produce any events. Uh, for example, if it is um, Mm. Uh, if uh, this happens inside the transaction, inside the smart contract, then it's purely uh, not visible in the blockchain. But we can extract these uh, things and allow users to monitor. And for example, uh, any custody fund, uh, any um, invoicing solution that wants to um, receive Ethereum not only f from uh, direct transaction, but uh, from smart contracts, it easily can consume such event and be consistent with the state of the blockchain. Right. So, so you mentioned that in ERC20, it's easy to track because all transactions have this uh, transact event, transfer event. Well, if you actually transfer Ether, and especially when a smart contract does something with Ether, it's uh, very difficult to track. So you're able to do that. And uh, there are some use cases for that. But what what about the current solutions like chain analysis? Are you doing something similar to them or you do also analysis, but for other use cases? How would you compare yourself to them? Um, so we are uh, so, so we now positioning ourselves not as a competitors of the chain analysis uh, but the complementary service because uh, we are really now we are a real time notification service uh, that uh, yes we uh, we are gathering uh, all the uh, events that we tracked to the big database for the further analysis but uh, this analysis is a kind of graph analysis uh, investigations for concrete case, uh, cases uh, and uh, so we do not provide our own risk scoring but we provide uh, integration with uh, third party tools uh, including uh, chain analysis or bitfury crystal uh, so we can enrich our events with their risk scoring so it, it is uh, now it, it's not uh, ready but it's in in development that we could uh, allow uh, our programmers to uh, Mm, attach any third-party tool to enrich information about events uh, from the blockchain. 
Right, so a, a good example maybe is that if I have an exchange, I can use your tool to have notifications about transactions coming to my exchange, and then I can also plug in chain analysis and give them the notification from you, and then they maybe will give me a risk score for that transaction. So would exactly. that be a use case? Exactly, and when I say our programmers, I don't mean uh, programmers who are creating parsecs. Uh, Parsec. I mean our users because first, uh, first auditory that will consume uh, Parsec. They will be programmers because we created our own programming language that allows you to transform, analyze uh, things in real time. Right. So I, I guess you need program your own programming language because uh, you need to structure the qu the query for the notification. Or why do you need it? B because it might be that I need some kind of complex notification. You know, when you know something happens, and also this thing happened, and then that, and then I get notification. Is that why you need the programming language, or what? What will we be scripting with that exactly? Uh, what? What? Uh, so uh, if we will take. Um, in uh, some very simple notification services like ls.io that is kind of our competitors, uh, then you will uh, immediately find that they could express only very simple, uh, only very simple uh, notifications uh, about uh, single wallets, about uh, single movements, uh, and so on. But we are allowing our users to attach their databases. So, for example, if you have a thousand or million addresses that you need to monitor, we allow our uh, users to populate databases at our site and uh, express the condition uh, that will include this uh, data from their databases, uh, how to monitor the blockchain. So, for example, we could populate uh, some table with all our addresses uh, and other addresses, for example, will be Binance addresses. And we could, uh, 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 we could uh, create a trigger that will monitor whether so there is a, some activity between uh, our set of addresses and the Binance addresses. Uh, calculate turnovers, uh, notify about turnovers, uh, and, and so on. So we, we, we could express pretty, pretty everything. Interesting. So it's more about being as expressive as possible. You can plug in your own data, you can plug in your own database, and thus construct better queries while you are, the, the service you mentioned is more like a simple version where you can just like monitor some addresses. Yes. So you, you can say that you're building something like Zapier, but uh, for crypto and more complex, like you can do a lot of scripting and I express your queries in a more uh, exactly. precise way. Exactly. So uh, we, uh, so some people identify us as the crypto appear. So right, crypto appear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could create uh, a, a, an expression that will uh, find the pattern and will react to it properly in, in the blockchain. And and so what about uh, Google BigQuery? What about Etherscan? Because in Google BigQuery, you can also they have they have this data set and you can do some queries on it. But I guess it's not real time. Or or is that the difference uh, between you? Or what is the difference? Uh, so uh, if we will speak about uh, Google BigQuery, uh, yes, they have this information and the query language, uh, and it is very convenient uh, that uh, they are using uh, SQL to. Uh, to extract data and even they will soon they will provide uh, real-time notifications but uh, here is one important difference uh, so in the google bigquery uh, the granularity of the events uh, they are the same as uh, things uh, that are visible in blockchains they are not replaying uh, blockchains uh, to, to extract low-level information. The most close thing that they have, uh, they have a so-called trace that is attached uh, to the transaction, but it's attached as one big binary thing that you should analyze and extract all other events uh, by yourself. But we already uh, parsed uh, all this trace uh, when it was uh, replayed in live uh, and produced a well-defined sequence of the events that uh, could be immediately consumed uh, in real time. So wh what do you mean with replayed? Because it's, this is more about how you actually make it work. So you have your own like node and it replays everything. Like is it difference in, in which uh, node that you have maybe like a full node with all the states and they don't and they mm -hmm. just look at some public node? Like what is the technical difference? Uh, 
Yeah, the technical difference that they communicate with nodes via uh, J JSON, uh, RPC, with, uh, with those things that are available uh, only from outside of nodes. And uh, if you want to, uh, and if you want to, for example, monitor the Ethereum itself, li like we already discussed, uh, then you need uh, not only extract the transaction uh, from from them, but also uh, extract the trace of this transaction. Uh, uh, think uh, thanks for the parity node that uh, it's exposed to this ability through the API, but unfortunately uh, they provide the trace as a big chunk of the data. So, and you need to analyze uh, this trace further, but we are not analyzing traces because we are at uh, that place where trace is being built. Right, right. And, and and when you say that, you mean that you have a node and you have like all the states, all the information yeah, you can... Rep all, or an instrumented node. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that's interesting. How, for how long have you been building this? Uh, what kind of uh, progress have you made? Like, is it only on the prototype stage or is it already working? What, what is the state right now? Uh, the state right now, we have an MVP. Uh, so we, we have worked uh, on this concept uh, around uh a, so around a year but but uh, actual development it's uh, kind of eight or, or seven months of development and we have a, a live preview where uh, we called it uh, uh, beta.parsic.io where you can register and uh, we will demonstrate uh, it uh, where you, you can register you can create your own small database uh, you uh, no, because now we are allowing you to define the database to populate it manually through the through the portal and to create your own triggers so you can create a project and a lot of triggers inside the project and right, so in which in which trigger you simply define the condition uh, attach the transport, for example, Telegram notifications, and then you can play in real in mainnet. Right, right. So, so th th that is quite interesting. Right now I can go, I can start building the triggers, and then I can choose, okay, tell me in Telegram when this event happens, yeah. and uh, maybe email or whatever medium you want to uh, get notified by. But so what do I need to know to write such, such notifications? Do I need to learn like your programming language, or what if I'm completely noob in technology, I don't know anything about programming, can I still use it? W what is the requirements? Uh, you, uh, so we, uh, we thought about it, and that is why uh, our program approach is to, uh, uh, to give users two abilities. One ability for advanced users uh, who could grasp the programming language, but the programming language itself, uh, uh, even for the uh, newcomers in the programming, if they already seen uh, any programming language, uh, uh, it will be very easy to understand because we didn't uh, implement uh, something very new. So, so we simply reused and created syntactic sugar that resembles uh, most popular programming language and the constructions are pre pretty simple. But for those uh, who uh, completely don't want to touch the code, uh, we're providing uh, an ability to uh, uh, bootstrap a trigger from the wizard. So the user simply opens the wizard, one of the predefined scenarios, uh, fills uh, some pro uh, properties, fills some fields, and uh, press the button, deploy this trigger, and the trigger is generated under the hood. So there is a code, uh, of course, but this code is not visible to user, so he will, uh, so he will work uh, with this trigger only through the wizard interface. Right. So, so up until now, we've been discussing a lot about the uh, Ethereum and that you, you, you can use this to track the movements of Ether. But what about other platforms and other pl blockchains? And what about cross-chain uh, analysis? Maybe, you know, maybe you have some hack and then the hackers try to do like atomic swaps cross-chains and they, they try to do a mixer and they wash it. Uh, uh, can, you tr can you notify me f when that happens as well, cross-chain? Uh, or only yeah, or need to be yeah, on can. one chain? Maybe, maybe here... Uh, maybe here uh, I will demonstrate well, my screen for for uh, for a bit, uh, and I want to show you how, how it uh, looks like. And 
So it's a new version of our language. So uh, now we deploy the language uh, that uh, is Ethereum oriented, but we have uh, generalized uh, this language to be able to deal with different blockchains uh, at the same time. So we uh, here uh, created uh, an example uh, where we can uh, work with the Ethereum and the Bitcoin simultaneously. Uh, so here we uh, were using a different. So each uh, each blockchain comes with its own types, which uh, its own units. Like for example, in Ethereum we have Ethereum, Way, Shannon, and so on. For right, example, right. In Bitcoin we have Bitcoin, Satoshi, Bits, and so on. So we generalized all the types, all the units and all the types of event streams in different blockchains because different blockchains they differ with the, uh, which type of events we can uh, extract from them uh, but the language itself uh, is blockchain agnostic so we could combine those event streams join them make joint conditions and react uh, simultaneously on different things uh, interesting, interesting. So uh, what we see right now is some simple queries. So for example, we're monitoring, uh, I, I see an Ethereum address, and then uh, you have a condition that if it is the case that the value is bigger than 0 0.1 uh, sorry, Bitcoin. Uh, sorry, it, it was uh, it was an ATH. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so we have this address we're monitoring, and if the value is bigger than 0 0.1 uh, Ether, uh, then we can do some con uh, some condition there. In mm -hmm. uh, So where do I write the condition? Is it like after selecting those curly braces, or where would I actually, uh, you know, script uh, it? Uh, this is not a condition. So uh, when, you, when you write this thing, uh, and uh, even this uh, ellipsis is meaningful. It, it's uh, it is not uh, an example. <clears throat> so okay. uh, here you can uh, write, for example, uh, things like a is equal to one, uh, b is equal to from, for example, no, uh, and so on. And this means uh, all other fields that are available in current context. Then, if we want, we uh, we can uh, put where, for example, uh, the same uh, a is uh, greater than zero because we just introduced an A and, and, and so on. Uh, but uh, we do not specify action uh, exactly here. Uh, we allow users to attach their uh, handlers what to do uh, via WebSockets, via webhooks. Uh, and uh, so if you want to react for now, for now, we do not provide the reactions. But, uh, okay, so so th this looks more like SQL. Like you you, you do some uh, selection of data, and then uh, and then you can, for example, expose it as a webhook. Like an, and then the, the 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 server of the programmer would do some action when he receives the exactly exactly but right. Uh, uh, it, it, it as well have have something like that the the, the, the process. Uh, and uh, you can uh, write something uh, like that, that state turnover is equal to zero and then uh, write that, that the turnover uh, plus equal to value uh, and then emit uh, all available things together with turnover. So and uh, it will aggregate all the values uh, and and pr provide uh, provide the information. Cool, cool, cool. So with this querying language, I can tell the system what I'm looking for, what kind of conditions, and then also do some simple calculation like turnover, for example. And then this data, together with my small calculations, will be sent to to the uh, exactly. user. Then. Exactly. Uh, only one thing that I would need to warn that uh, we have uh, different uh, small uh, small discrepancies in syntax because in current version in current version uh, we are using this syntax not uh, not uh, using add but uh, uh, most programmers that we were contacted and they uh, were they came from CoffeeScript and Ruby they asked us to uh, to to use this syntax because it it will be immediately comfortable for uh, all the rubies for coffee script and so, and so on and uh, right very very interesting so uh, w what about your uh, your tokens I, kn I know that you have uh, baked in a token in the system what, why do we need it and how will it be used but the uh, token itself uh, token itself uh, so 
uh, we have a, a lot of ideas uh, how to how to use our tokens, uh, and one of the most uh, complex idea uh, was to use the token as the gas. But we simplified the idea that the token itself will be used uh, only as a payment uh, payment mean that unlocks uh, the discount. So it's kind of like Binance Coin that you get some some discounts and some extra perks. Yes, exactly. So it's, uh, the more uh, the more uh, tokens uh, you have, the more discount you uh, you can use. And uh, basically, we have uh, tires, a free tire uh, that includes so-called uh, free amount of activation. So, so we are uh, we are speaking about activation events when we activate your trigger. Uh, so for, All right. people, for for 10k uh, activations per month, uh, so, so if it below, then it's uh, like a free tire. It, interesting. And so, what kind of costs are we looking at? Is it like Zapier, or is it, is it more expensive because it's more niche than like it's more a professional use case? Because Zapier, it, man, it can get so expensive with Zapier if you have like a business that really needs it, <laughs> and you you know maybe you pay like five hundred dollars if you're a medium sized business per month. So with this, what what kind of costs are we looking at? Uh, so for ordinary programmers that uh, that implement their <coughs> their open source products or the community driven, uh, we can uh, even uh, give this ability for free. Uh, but uh, for the commercial uh, products, uh, uh, definitely it will it will be more. But we are now in the piloting phase, so we are uh, onboarding as much customers as we want and uh, we are now in the process of defining uh, definition of our pricing right 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 uh, and what about the ieo i've seen that you, you're gonna be having an ieo when is that gonna happen and where is it gonna happen uh, so uh, we uh, yes we are planning and planning an ieo uh, and it will be uh, somewhere uh, at the beginning or in the mid-september uh about the about uh, where it will be so we, we are considering uh because we now we are partnering uh, with one exchange that uh probably will be uh, one of our clients and uh, so it's a kind of syner synergy uh but uh, the further information i would say that you you need to uh, follow us on uh, our telegram channel Right. What kind of other developments do we see? What kind of future developments? Like if you think about the next few months or, or half a year, maybe. So firstly, uh, we, we are planning to deliver uh, this cross-chain uh, cross version of Parsicle. Uh, so it's a cross-chain version uh, and uh, the support of the uh, Bitcoin and many of Bitcoin forks uh, there. Uh, to be monitorable and uh, as well uh, there will be uh, Latvian blockchain week uh, immediately after the Baltic honey badger uh, and uh, we will present the Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin money uh, Bitcoin transaction monitoring uh, there uh, so you you could go uh, live uh, and, and see how, how it works very cool very cool Thank you so much, Anatoly. Guys, go check out Parsi, go check out their Telegram, join their community, definitely stay up to date. And Anatoly, any final words before we wrap this up? So this is a tool from programmers to programmers, and we really know the pain points and want to uh, give you an ability to concentrate on your business logic instead of solving a really but things that happen in blockchains when you monitor them. Very, very cool, guys. Thank you so much, Anatoly.